There we go. Okay. This meeting is being recorded. So, as I sent out, we are going to be talking today about the preparation of the Jewish people to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai, um, which was actually in last week's Torah portion. But, hi, Anna. It was in last week's Torah portion, but we, um, as we, we always go a week before, and um, actually this week's Torah portion is really a continuation, a big part of the giving of the Torah, which is spoken about in last week's Torah portion. Last week's Torah portion is known to be the parsha for the giving of the Torah, actually continues at the end of this week's parsha. Um, interestingly enough, after the Torah goes through a lot of different laws. The, the verse states... I put, I wrote the verse in the email that I didn't put it in my notes, so I'll tell you where which verse it is. Um, it's verse it's chapter nineteen, verse two. Sorry, ver, yeah, verse two, nineteen, verse two. In the in the book of Exodus, the book of Shemos, this is the portion of Yisro, and the pasuk says. I'll actually pull it up in the Chumash. It'll be easier. 19.2. Welcome, Noga. And Robin. Okay, everyone is here. Perfect. Sorry, Emily. No worries. Chapter 19, verse 2. So, uh, verse 1, Torah says that in the third month, so the third month from when the months were counted, which was, uh, which began... This was um, this was the month of, of Nisan when God first commanded, told the Jewish people about the mitzvah of the of of, of the, the calendar, the Jewish calendar. Two weeks later was Passover, was the freedom from Egypt. The Jewish people left Egypt, and here we are at the beginning of the third month, the month of Siva. The Torah says, "Bachodesh Hashlishi." In the third month after the Jewish people left Egypt, on this day they arrived in the Sinai Desert. This was actually, then the Torah goes on in verse 2 and tells us again where they came from. They came from Rafidim, the Yisrael Rafidim. And they, again, it says they came to the, 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 the Sinai Desert. By Yachin and Bamidba, they camped, they encamped in the desert. By Yichan, Sham Yisrael, Neged Ahar. So this is really for this first part of the class is really, uh, if you speak Hebrew, it's easier to, um, the, the question is not the question, but the, the difference in the verse is more sticks out more where the Torah is talking about the entire Jewish people, so whatever it is, two or three million people coming to the desert, the Sinai desert to receive the Torah. Really? And the Torah says, by Yichan Sham Yisrael, and Israel um, camped, but by Yichan means an it camped or he camped. Did you say in singular. million? I'm sorry? Did you say million? Two or three million, yeah. You, there was two or three million. I thought there were thousands. I didn't know there were millions. Well, with Torah says clearly there was 600,000, um, 600,000, and that was men between the ages of 20 and 60. Oh, only men. Only men between 20 and 60 were, 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 were 600,000. So the, 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 there's different numbers given. But oh, the, I thought that it was three million is, is, is what's most... Uh, was the most common commonly used. Okay, I thought that it was everybody. I'm sorry. No. So the Torah says, "Vayichan Sham Yisrael Neged Ahar," and the Jewish people camped in front of the mountain of Mount Sinai. But it says "Vayichan," which is singular, and he camped. It doesn't say "Vayachan Nu," and they camped like it said, like it said in the verse in the the, the word beforehand. They they camped in the desert. It says, "And it camped." Vayichan, uh, he camped. The Jewish people. So Rashi and the there's differences with Rashi and the Midrash. We're not going to get into the the, the um, minute differences, but the, the Rashi bring, says right away, and he's bringing from different Midrash mid, Midrashim that says that they were ish echad echad, like one person with one heart. So when they came to when they camped in front of Mount Sinai, they were like one person with one heart. However, Rashi continues, and this is from the Midrash again, in all other encampments, they were um, they were they had disputes, disagreements, and conflict. The Bat Bemachloket over Tar Omet. 
So specifically over here, they were all like one man with one heart. And this is really being brought out, the fact that it says that they, that, um, that, that there, the Jewish people camped there in front of the mountain. So specifically over there, they camped as one in singular. But in all other places, they camped, they were, they were, there was conflict between them. Now I want to go back to a verse in the portion before this, in the portion of Bashalach. Again, I put it in, in the email. It's ver chapter 14, verse 10. And then you, you, you dropped me off the email, so I don't get that anymore. I dropped you off the email? Yep. No, I did not. Yep. Okay, I'm very sorry. It's I, okay. I, I, just, I just don't know what, every time I just find an old one and I get in. Since okay. I went to, since I was away for three weeks. Oh, I took you off, I guess, while you were away. I figured you don't need to. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll make sure that Fine, you. Fine, I just don't know. I just don't know okay. where those psukim are, is all. Okay, so it's Perak um chapter 14, verse 10. And here, we're talking about when the Jewish people are running away. Oh, they weren't, they didn't start running away. They left, they left Egypt. They were freed from Egypt by the Egypt by Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and then on the third day, we all know how the this, how unfolded that, that Pharaoh's Pharaoh's it says that the heart of Pharaoh and his servants um, changed. They they had they had suddenly suddenly they regretted letting the Jewish people go, and they started follow, chasing the Jewish people towards the Yamsuf, towards the Red Sea. About the, which verse did I say? I said 14 verse 10. Okay. And here's what it says. O paro hikriv, and Pharaoh came closer to them. By Yisro b'nei Yisrael at name, the Jewish people opened their eyes. They looked up. V'hinei Mitzrayim nosea acharem. And here Egypt was was coming, was travel, was was coming after them. Again, the word the word for the word is used in singular. Nosea is used is usually used in is is a, is usually an, an, an individual. Instead of saying vene mitzrayim nosim, which would be plural, it says nosea in singular. And the Jewish people feared and they cried out to God. So here again, we see that the Egyptians, in contrast to the Jewish people, they also were there was also a singular being used for them, a certain unity. Certain oneness, and here Rashi says again. The Rashi brings from the midrash, and this, but he said it in a different order. He says, "Belevechad keishachad," like with one heart, like one person. So instead of saying like one person with one heart, he says like one heart. One, they were like one. They all had one heart, one uh, intention, one feeling, and they were like one person. What is the What's being brought out over here between these two these two verses where it's used used singular? And by the way, it's not so uncommon that the Torah will use a singular um, um, expression to bring to talk about an entire nation. So it's, it happens sometimes. It's, this is the nation of the of Egypt. This is the nation of the Jewish people, the Jewish nation. So it's not talking about the individuals. But when is it usually used when we're talking about an action? Or something that everyone does together. So let's say that uh, let, uh, something which something which everybody can be equal in, which is looking, walking, something which something which is all um, something which is they're all doing the same thing. Even though there are many different people, but they're all doing the same thing. So we can use singular. When it's when we talk about an intention or a feeling that people have, every person is different. It doesn't make a difference. How, they're all different. They all have their own, their own ideas, their own feelings. You know, one, they all, they, and so there's differences, different, different levels, different groups, lots of different individuals. So it, it's not so, it, it's, it's not so common. And it doesn't, doesn't really, unless we're trying to bring out something very specific, that the Torah will use a singular for something which is an intention or a feeling or a, a focus, an idea. For example, the Torah says, if we look um, a couple verses later on in the same portion in, in Bashalach, it 
Look at verse 31, chapter 14, verse 31. Sorry. Okay. What's this? You got it? Chapter chapter 14, verse 31. The Jewish people saw the great hand of God. Vayar. Yar is singular. Again, we're talking about the entire Jewish people because they all saw the same thing. They all saw God's greatness being um, being show, being um, expressed to them. Through God splitting the sea and drowning the Egyptians. Then the verse continues. The Jewish people feared God in plural. They all had awe for God in plural because they all had a different level of awe. It's a feeling. This is a, a herget. This is something in the heart. So what some people were more, some people that were greater and on a higher level were more inspired, and some were less inspired. And again, Vayamin, and they believed, it says in plural again, because in belief, everyone is different. There's different levels of trust and belief and connection to God, which is being, which is being felt by all the different people. Interesting. Another example, since, since we're, we're on it already, that later on, in, later on in the Yisra, again, in the portion of the giving of the Torah, the Torah says, we find the verse, By Yaram Leyendu, where is this verse? Sorry. Chapter 20, verse 20, verse 15. 20, verse 15. At the end of the end of the Ten Commandments. The verse says, all of the people saw the, the sounds and the, the, the lightning and the chauffeur, the, 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 the voice of the chauffeur and the, and the, ha, and the, and the mountain, which, was, which had cloud, which had the, the smoke on it. And the people saw, they all saw the same thing. They all saw the same mountain sign there with the same, same, with the same um, uh, lightning. And they also saw, by the way, it says they saw thunder, something which is impossible. They saw what you can usually only, they saw what you can only usually hear. It's a side point. They all saw the same thing. The end of the, the end of the verse. This is this is the this is five words before the end of the verse. and they were shaken. They were shaken up. This is plural, not singular, because they were all shaken up differently. And then they all stepped back. They all were moved. They they all they were all so shaken up that they all jumped back. They all were different in that expression of feeling. Yes, it was a, an action that they did. They all jumped back, but it was all based on their their being shaken up. So depending on how shaken up they were is how much they jumped back. Back to the verse, the verse in last week's portion where the Egyptians are coming after them. It says, look, and, they, and behold, the, the, the nation of Egypt was cut, no seah, in singular, coming after them. The point over here is not that they were coming after them. In the fact that they were coming after them, that makes sense. They're all they're all coming with the same. They're all travel. They're all at the same pace. They're all coming after the Jewish people. The point over here is that they're coming after the Jewish people, and here we have a very unique point. That even though you would imagine they all have different intentions, they all have a different level of feeling of 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 feel of of hate or whatever it is to the Jewish people, and. And feelings to want to to want to wipe them out, to want to, to want to bring them back as slaves, whatever it is. Just imagine you've got Pharaoh, you've got Pharaoh's Pharaoh's uh, um, right hand man, his his Chartumim, uh, his his uh, his um, his the witch the, the 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 witches and those people, and then you've got um, you've got Pharaoh's servants, and then you've got all the people of Egypt. Among the people of Egypt, there were some people that weren't so bad. There were some people that were encouraging Pharaoh to send the Jewish people out. They started the war with Pharaoh to send the Jewish people out. We find very interestingly that um, in the in the um, by the by the plague of how did, it was a big question. How did the Egyptians have all these horses to come after the Jewish people? 
if we look back at the if we look back at the plague, so there was the plague of the death of the the, death of the the sickness of the animals. A lot of animals died, so they didn't all die, but many of them died. Later on, by by hail, anyone that was outside was was dead. So it says that God basically that the the ones who were God fearing, Moses and Aaron warned Pharaoh beforehand that this is going to happen, and many often a few of the times they were they were ignored what Moses and Aaron said. But in this case, when Moses and Aaron warned Pharaoh about the plague, the Egyptians that were more God fearing, Hayare Estevar Hashem, the Torah is clear, the ones who were more God fear had more fear of God, brought their animals into the houses. So they wouldn't get so they wouldn't get killed. So those these people, the ones who were more God fearing in the plague of, of, of hail, that didn't take away from their hate to the Jewish people. They all came together with Pharaoh and together with his people with their horses to chase the Jewish people into the sea. And this is the unique point that, that Rashi and the Midrash is bringing out, the Rashi specifically is bringing out over here. The Rashi says that they were all coming, they were, they were all the Levachat with one heart. Their hate to the Jewish people was, was shared by all of them. They all felt the, big, the, 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 the pain and the disgust and the hate to the Jewish people that they wanted to wipe the Jewish people out. Meaning, even the people that were, even the people that had this this fear of God, that were, that had them had shown had shown that they were that they were understand that they believed in God and they knew that the plague was going to happen and they brought their animals in and they listened to Moses and Aaron. When it came to hate to the Jewish people, especially in this case, when Pharaoh's heart changed, all of their hearts changed. They all regretted letting the Jewish people go and they all came after, it, which is why they all died in the sea. They all got punished because they all had that same pain, that same hate to the Jewish people. Maybe they were mad that God killed their sons. I'm sure they were mad, but that in this case, that coming after the Jewish people was not, I mean, it wasn't the best idea for them because they knew that the plagues had happened and this was, uh, this was, um, you know, probably not going to be so different than, you know, God is sticking up for the Jewish people. And yeah, I mean, whatever it is, the point is that they had, that it could be, they had their hate to the Jewish people was very, was, was strong. So based on, because of whatever just, it was. Well, maybe they were just doing what Pharaoh told them. That's a good, it's a good point. Actually, it's a whole discussion about this. I, I don't want to get, it's a little bit off topic, but there's a whole, this is a discourse from the rabbi on this week's portion, but there's a whole discourse about, I learned two years ago about, um, about this, this whole approach of the Jew, um, when they came to the sea, and how all of them came. And there's a lot of back and forth about, about, um, how was it? Was Pharaoh the one that was it all Pharaoh? Was it them also? But we're not going to get into too many details. The point over here is that they that they all had the same hate to the Jewish people, which is why it was singular, the way why it was equal. They all felt the same equally, even though it doesn't. It's not typical that when it comes to hate, everyone should be the same. But it was belavachad. It was all with one heart. It didn't mean that they were united as good as friends, but their their one heart then brought out the fact that they all did the same thing. They all came after the Jewish people with the same with the same pace, with the same the same intention. And this week's portion, back to the verse on in chapter nineteen, verse two. So what do we say in verse one? It says uh, in verse two it says that they came that they that they encamped, they camped in the in the in the desert. So we know that they all came to the desert. We know the fact already. The fact is already known. What fact? That they all went to the yeah. desert? That they came to the desert. They all camped in the desert. They all came to the desert. You're talking about the Israelites now. Yeah. Chapter 19, verse 2. I know we're doing a lot of jumping back and forth today. Need like five different Hamash to be on the same. So, so the Torah says that they came, that they left with and they came to the mat, they came to the desert of Sinai. They camped in the desert, and here it, and then the Torah says again that they camped, that it, the Jewish people camped, he camped. So here we try, what we're expressing over here is not the fact of what they actually did, the deed, the action of coming to the desert, but something about the way they camped in the desert, because the Torah is repeating again that they camped. So it's another, it's not just repetition, it's to bring out a point. What was the focus? What was the intention? What was the, what was the, um, what was the, the, how did it, how did it look when they camped? 
So again, we're going to think, we would imagine, that when it comes to receiving the Torah on Mount Sinai, everybody has different levels of, of excitement and feeling, right? We've got Moses. Moses must have been tremendously excited. Moses was so close to God. Aaron. The 70 elders that, that were also allowed to be on the first part of the mountain, come close to the mountain. And then you had the, the Jewish people. And within the Jewish people, we had all different kinds of people. Remember, remember we had the people that are always the ones that, that, that uh, come and, and dispute God's power and shout at Moses and Aaron. So we, they're not all on the same, the same spiritual level. So again, we're going to think, we're going to imagine that there's all these differences in their intention, in their excitement, in their feeling to get the Torah. When it comes to feelings, everyone's different. Everyone has different ideas. Torah says no. Ba'yichan sham Yisrael. In singular. Ki'ishachad, Rashi says, like one person. That there was a certain oneness, there was a certain unity that was, that was brought out between the entire Jewish people, specifically then, which expressed itself, number one, in the fact that they were all together, they were all loving for each other. And then it expressed itself in the fact that they were all ready to receive the Torah with the same excitement, the Levachar, with the same heart. Which is an incredible idea that Moses and the Jewish people that were usually the ones to, to make the problems were all equally excited to receive the Torah because they were all united, because they were all feeling connected. So again, by intentions, it doesn't usually make sense to say that it's singular. But here we're doing that. We're saying they're all, all as one. So the point over here is not that they were in front of the mountain, that they were because they were coming to get the Torah, they were all equally excited. No. The point is because they were all one, because they were all connected as brothers, as friends, because of that, that then that that brought out an, a deep desire, um, which is you know, obviously when people are together and they're all connected and they're all we know we know very we know very clearly that when 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 there is um, stress or conflict, those kind of things, it's much harder for us to to um, become more spiritual, to become to reach to a deeper, higher level, a, a place where we're able to see beyond things which are are difficult. When we're all, when are the big? What is the most profound times of inspiration? When we all share something in common. When we, when people do things as a group. So as a group, they're all connected as a group, which was unique to this time. That then expressed itself in their heart being one. They were all able to feel the same excitement and the same desire and the same wanting to receive the Torah. Make sense? Verse uh, 8 is really, uh, I think, is something we've talked about, we've talked about a lot. Uh, uh, chapter 19, mm -hmm. it says that they all answered together by Yanu Kolam Yachdav. And then I think to myself, and then it says, and Moses went back to God to tell him. And I'm thinking, doesn't God know what they said? <laughs> Great question. You're not the first one to ask this question. What? And pretty, you're not the first one to ask this question. I'm I think sure it's, I'm not. A, a number of commentaries bring it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's something yeah. very sweet about it that yeah. Moses yeah. is still yeah. the in between. Yeah, yeah, very much so. There's a certain idea, a certain like you know, Moses is doing his job. I mean, we can look yeah. at it from that from that perspective. You know, Moses was most why did Moses have to go up to the mountain to receive the Torah? You know, God, this is you report, you report to your to your master to your, to your master, you know, that you would go back and you you know. Well, that that actually makes more sense to me that he had to go up to the mountain because it says clearly that the people were afraid and they said you go you go we we're too afraid to go well, why couldn't god transmit it to him where he was why did he have to go up i think just so that he'd be separate from the people because it says mm -hmm. that the people were right next to the mountain just like what you said now they're like right there mm -hmm. So, it, also set, it also sets up the, the problem later with when Moshe was gone for a little too long in the, in the golden yeah. calf. Um, all of a sudden, he's becoming this mediator almost. You know, where the, the people are expecting him. He's the one who 
goes up and down the mountain, up and down, up and down, talks to God, brings things down. Yeah. Yeah. You know I think what, what I'm trying to bring out what I'm trying to bring out more over here is the fact that that if we're when we're talking about spiritual, you know, discussions between God and Moses or God and Jewish people, like this whole idea, this whole fit the whole physical aspect of it, you know, having to go back to tell God or having to, you know, be a mountain, go up on the mountain and, and all these things. Obviously there was the awe which was felt from from seeing all these revelations of you know these natural these physical revelations of God. But at the same time, there was obviously some there's obviously something about it playing out in the physical in reporting. You know, people often ask me about writing to the Rebbe. You know, I say to people, I encourage people to write a, to you know if they, to write a letter to the Rebbe. You know, to send a letter to the Rebbe's to the Re, to, the, to the Rebbe's graveside to ask for a blessing. Or people do it at the Kotel, right? They write notes and put it in the Kotel. Yeah, doesn't God doesn't God know what we um you know what we uh what our problems are? Why doesn't God know what we're think, feeling? Why can't we just they think it or say it, you know, why do we have to pray? Why do we have to say the words? So, I mean, it's a long, it's a big discussion in itself. Why do we have to say the words or the prayers? You know, if God, God hears us, God knows us. And to a certain, to a certain extent, it's true. You know, we don't always need, you know, sometimes there are times when we just pray from the heart, only from the heart, but this it's, it's kind of a different, a different topic. Right. But I think there is something about the doing that, when we're not just thinking about something, but also acting. Yeah, that, for sure. That, yeah. yeah. Like we're doing our part. Right. Moses is doing his part. Right. So the Egyptians were not connected to each other. They weren't loving to each other. They didn't feel a unity between each other. They weren't like one man. They were, and it expressed itself when it came to chasing the Jewish people. They all came with the same, with the same, with the same excitement because they because of the hate. But it all started in the heart of their feelings to the outside, feelings to the Jewish people. Whereas with the Jewish people, they were one between them. They had true unity, and because of that, they were able to become one to receive the Torah, which is why we all have we're given the same soul, which is all coming from the same place. It's for all you know. It's the place which un, unites us all together. Whereas when they came to the other encampments, other places in the desert, there they were disagreeing about things. There was conflict. No, there was there was they there was dis there was different. They were all on different. Um, they were they there was a divide between them, and that divide then expressed itself in the fact that they also had conflict, and they also had they were also unable to the conflict when it came to their connection to God. They weren't able to receive God's word and be loyal to God on the same level. Some were more loyal and some were less loyal. You know, you had the you had the you had the, the Levites and you had the rest of the Jewish people at different levels of, of, of people when it came to other other times. You know, by the spies and other things. But what, but that but with Mount Sinai they all were equally connected to God because of their connection between them. Which is profound that that the the, the the when we're connected between each other, that could then play out also in our connection. That plays out in our connection to God. From a from a Hasidic or Kabbalistic perspective, as we say that Rashi, the, the, I think the Shalah, who was one who was a uh, Kabbalist and also a great scholar in the, the the 15th century, I think he said is that Rashi, you know, he's very he always speaks about the simple understanding of the verses, which is what we're doing over here, taking it apart, you know, on a very simple level. But at the same time, inside of his words, you could also find the wine of Torah. Wine brings out secrets. Wine, when we drink a lot of wine, it brings out the, uh, a lot, a little bit also, a depth, depth within us, you know? Something deeper. It could bring out something deeper. It could also bring out a lot of garbage, but it could bring out something deeper. <laughs> so right. the world is a public domain. We know that when it comes to the laws of, lots of laws in Jewish law, Shabbat and other things, is the private domain, the Rishut Yachid, and then there's the public domain. What do we mean when we say a public domain? Public meaning that there's there's lots of differences. There's lots of, of details. There's a plural. There's me and there's you and there's each one of us and we all have our own style and our own opinions, our own feelings. Forget about us, even just things in the world. Everything's different. Everything has its unique purpose and sometimes things conflict with each other. Water and fire don't get along and you know, there's different, there's animals that don't get along with each other and there's there's lots of, of conflict in the world um, the way things were set up. 
it expresses itself in us, which we are the, the highest species of the people. We have the, the greatest level of knowledge and, and understanding and choice that we, that we all have different, we're all different, and we all have different opinions and different ideas, different ways of thinking, different schools of thought. And that then expresses itself in the fact that we all do different things. Often very conflict, conflicting things with each other between us. What do you mean exactly? Because, I mean, some things we do different, but some things we have to do the same just to survive. Right. I'm saying, you know, is look at, look at liberals and Republicans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you've got the different, you've got different, different opinions. The opinion starts from the fact that they're different kinds of people, the different kinds of, you know, I know, obviously what I'm about to say is that the, that there's the oneness of God, which is really Hashem Echad, right? Hashem right. Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Hashem is our God in plural, but then there's Hashem is, um, Hashem is, is, um, is one. Mm-hmm. That when we bring out, when we reveal Hashem's light in the world, Hashem's light in the world is really, a oneness. It's really a private domain. The whole world is one purpose, one idea, one one focus, and ultimately that's where we could be. Also, that's where we are if we if we do the work. You know, obviously we can't always do it for somebody else. We have to show an example, so we have to inspire others. But when we do the work, when we do the work, we can bring out in us the oneness of God that we're all actually not conflicting. We're all on the same team. Go on, Robin. Oh, thanks. So. Um... Oh, I'm just clapping. I didn't mean to clap. I saw, no, I saw that you were, wanted to say I was. Yeah. <laughs> At least yeah. I don't have a, a, a bunny face. <laughs> You're really excited, I guess. <laughs> you know what I wanted to say? I just, oh, before I, before I go there. So when is this going to happen again? When Moshiach comes, that we're all the, the Jewish divine souls are going to be, I see it on a horizontal level. You know, we're all, we're all connected, maybe a graph we're all basically the same horizontal and then we've got all these connections going up um i guess the next time will be when moshiach comes huh yes uh, uh, in the set rule well, when we say when moshiach comes it's not gonna it's 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 some it's a work in progress and obviously we're gonna say look oh. around it doesn't look like we're, we're really moving there you know? no 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 but, but, but it is a work in progress and it doesn't it's not always our judgment that determines you know we don't the, the 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 world has changed in many ways and there is you know there is a certain shared feeling and opinion between most people about the war in ukraine let's say you know other things which which um maybe 50 years ago 100 years ago when two nations would be fighting you know look at the holocaust look at look at the second world war you know how long did it take until people came along came around so there's there's, there's a certain there is changes in the world, but also but on, without getting into the outside picture, which is not our business, it's more our business is our personal work, is that we are working in progress to get there. And every t- and all of the, the, the work that we do to bring that out and to bring out the healing and the oneness in the world is getting us closer to Mashiach's coming. And especially when it's to do with serving Hashem and it's all for the same, you know, the same focus. Um, and I wouldn't say it's only about the Jewish people. It's the, the, the yes, there is the Jewish soul, but it's, everything in the world and every person has their purpose and there's conflict. And the point is to bring out the unity between every single thing in the world, not just people and not just, and certainly not just the Jewish people. Oh. This revelation of God in the world, and this is, I mean, we're talking about the Jewish people. How, how does it, how, how is it most, where does it, what does it express itself through? Hashem made, Hashem created, made to, the two things which are Hashem loves the most, which it says in the Midrash, and that Hashem created the world with this, with this being the purpose, and that's obviously something which we have to dig much deeper into to understand what that means. Torah and the Jewish people. That God, 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 so to speak, created the Jewish people in Torah, intention in his in in the will and the desire of God, whatever that means, before He created the world, with a, with with the purpose of them being the expression. The way God is going to be revealed, the way the oneness of God is going to be revealed, revealed in the public domain. The Torah wasn't given yet before Mount Sinai, before before the sixth of Sivan, when God revealed Himself in Mount Sinai. Six days before that, when the Jewish people came to the desert and they camped, Torah hadn't been given yet. So, but what there was, what was expressed, was the oneness between the Jewish people. We can't be an expression for God's oneness in the world if we're not one between us, if we're not, if we're not united. 
And that unity was expressing itself before the Torah was even given. That oneness of the soul that we all have something which is which is why, so to speak, Hashem chose us also to give us all a soul which is which unites us all together. This soul, this the, the source of this soul is not something um is not something um um, it's not an intellectual idea. It's something which is beyond. It's beyond intellect. It's beyond feelings. It's beyond. It's a place where we are actually one, where the differences don't show up. And that was expressed through the Jewish people on their own when they came to the desert, Sinai Desert, feeling that one. That one. Is that one. Sorry. Which also then brought out their their readiness and their desire to receive the Torah. Now, this was the Jewish people specifically. The Egyptians was something very different. They were actually, it was all about hate. And it wasn't unity. They weren't actually united. They actually were all, they all had the same hate, but they didn't have the same unity between them. Hashem makes choice in the world. Hashem puts everything that Hashem makes for the good, Hashem also makes it for the bad. We ask, you know, did God create bad in the world? Why is there bad in the world? The reason that there's bad in the world is so we'll have the, be, there'll be choice. We'll be able to really make a choice between which way do we want to choose. Look, I put it, because God says in Deuteronomy, look, I put in front of you the life and the death and the, the, the good and bad, and you should choose life. I'm, I want you to, I'm, I'm encouraging you to choose life, but you could choose the otherwise. So but the, the, there was a certain, the, there was a certain um, oneness between the Egyptians because of this idea that Hashem made oneness in the world there was also a a unity between the Egyptians, but it wasn't true unity. It wasn't true unity of them, of humanity, of being, of feeling connected to each other. It was a unity which came about because of their hate, because of their negative feelings to the Jewish people. It wasn't from their essence. Whereas the Jewish people, it was an essential bond between them. It wasn't about receiving the Torah specifically. It was about their bond between them. Then it expressed itself in their desire to receive the Torah, but it was a bond in their essence. From the soul. So you know, you keep talking about this, but all the the history that we read in the Torah is all about uh, fighting between the Jewish people, and even in, between our fathers, like Esav and uh, and Yaakov, and then what the brothers did to Joseph, and all along, and then we have Korach and all these other, and yes. I mean that's not. Totally unity, one heart. No, it's not. It's not. And it wasn't. And every other place, that's what the Midrash brings out. Rashi brings out. In every other place, it was conflict. It was fighting. It was disagreements. So just in this type, moment in time. In this moment, which was a, which was a, a, a vital, pivotal moment in the history of the Jewish people in the most essential way, because this was... This was our. This was when we made when we made the, when we made the the covenant. The 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 one the the um. This is when God made us into a nation. Obviously, there was different levels before that. There was Abraham, there was Jacob, and there was the Egypt. It was leaving Egypt, but receiving the Torah was when was when we when God revealed Himself to the Jewish people. The only time when God revealed Himself to the entire Jewish people on that level, where it says that they saw the God, they, they saw they saw something which was beyond, you know, which we never ever saw before, and that was an equal side. They all saw it, and beforehand there was that one time which was a pivotal moment when they all united. Um, which is something that we that we should be working to relive and to 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 try to, to try try to replay it. Um, yeah, even as now they're you, fighting like crazy in Israel. It's just a big time right now. Yeah. So ultimately, the giving of the Torah also was not was this is the last point is was not just was also did made a change in the world. We've spoken many times about the. The marshal, the 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 um, analogy of the king in in Syria and the king in in um, Rome. Those were the two big nations then that they were Assyria and Rome, whatever that they were fighting. Um, that, that that they that they were that they one didn't go to the other. They they stay in their own places. This is the midrash. It's not a real story. Stay and stay and um, stay in their own places. And then um and then there was a they broke they they made a they made a this 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 um decree was taken away and they and they each come together. So it says, God, until the Torah was given, God was in the heavens, we were in the earth. In a certain way, though, the God's revelation, God's oneness and essence wasn't really brought out in, in physical deeds, in physical actions. 
For example, we couldn't take a Torah scroll and make it holy. We couldn't take a piece of leather and make it into tefillin. It wouldn't, the holiness wouldn't stay. Now we have the whole idea of shemot. We don't throw a in the garbage. If it's worn out, we bury it. Because God has expressed it in the physical. And this also re was revealed in the world. Which is why, ultimately, after the Torah was given, we can also bring out this oneness and this unity can also be brought out in non-Jewish non people and all people of the world and all things in the world. Because it's no longer just a, a oneness, um, which is a copy of the Jewish people through hate instead of love, but it's actually true oneness in the world. And how do we do that? By bringing up, by teaching these ethical ideas that were given in the Torah, and specifically the seven Noahide laws, which have many, many different details to them, not because they were no, given to Noah. The Rambam says very clearly, not because they were given to Noah, because they were given to, to because they were given to, it, to somebody else, but because they were revealed through Moses on Mount Sinai. We don't, they're not, they shouldn't be done because of the, because they make sense, just because they're ethical, but they should be done because ultimately God gave a GPS for the whole world of a way to achieve unity and achieve connection, which is a true unity, which we are all responsible for by making an example and taking everything that we have and revealing inside of it, the Rishusa Yachit, the private domain for God, which we all are, it says that we, the world was created for each one of us. So it's our responsibility to care about those around us and to do what we can to reveal this oneness in the world. Good. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. You know what I'd also like to add before we leave? Rabbi, in the beginning, you were talking about um, how uh, uh, the Torah will um, use name one person and that person refers to a bigger whole, right? Like they'll say Israel, Israel moved their moved it, his camp, and that's really the whole, right? You were, mm -hmm. were you talking about that? Yes. Okay, so there is a word for that in English. Um, it's a noun. It's um, uh, for when a, it's a figure of speech when a part is made to represent the whole, or vice versa. And it's called the synecdoche, uh, uh, synecdoche. I'll, I'll write it down. It's a really- it's, Thank you. Yeah, please send that to me. Thank it, you for giving also, me some English. It, it also B has- B comes on, for, on Sunday to teach Mendel English, but I could have used an English class from, an English class also. So thank you, Robin. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. I'll, yeah, but if you welcome. use this word, nobody will know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I collect- Especially not Noga. I collect words. I have I have a list of hundreds of, of words nobody's ever heard of. And when I drop them into conversation, it's fantastic. Those are yeah. the Greek oh, Orthodox. Sorry, I have another, another, that word. another appointment coming. Okay. You guys next week. But thank, you, thank you, thank you. Part, very part much. of being a lawyer, I guess. Part of being a lawyer is you have no, to say No, no, it was before things. I was a lawyer. I'm a reader. Yeah. Robin, isn't that word, um, is, isn't that what the Greek Orthodox Church uses? I believe that they use that a part of that word as a as their organization yeah you might be right yeah I'm looking i'm I looking it's maybe a greek, it, it has a greek yeah it and has I think a greek, greek begin, yes church. it's yes, via greek latin church. from greek syn syn yeah yes you're right very good yeah the greek orthodox church uses that as as one of their uh, terms for their uh religious organization very good yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a reader too. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. Bye, you guys. Thanks so Bye, much. everyone. Bye now. Bye. Oh.